Our next question is from Amutsa, and uh, he asks, you mentioned Terence McKenna. He said about the current situation of our society and about our point in history as a whole, that we are in a state of transition. He compared it to, a pro to the process of birth, which you mentioned in your talk. So if we are as humanity are in the birth canal, how can we ease the pains and traumas that we see all over the world? And what can we do to not lose faith that there is something beyond? Well, again, this is a really complicated question. Um, well, it's not complicated in the sense that there are a lot of people who have spiritual experiences both within and outside religious frameworks. Um, through spiritual practices, including psychedelics, who feel that we are connected to something far greater than ourselves and that humanity is about much more than just gross national product and ever greater consumption um, and, um, and you know, bigger and better everything. Um, so I think there are plenty of people who already know that. Um, the question is, how, does, how do we actually express that through political and economic and social realities? Um, there are clearly strong forces working against this. There's the tremendous inertia of the economic system uh, with all the vested interests. There's the fact that now many people in the world have been converted to consumerism. Um, people were not consumerist in traditional societies, now they are. Um, and uh, then there's all the sort of usual social and economic problems and rising population, environmental degradation, climate change, and so on. Well, I think that if we have a, a spiritual vision and, and connect to a sense of really hope, um, that things can change and imagine things uh, better. That's part of the answer. Despair, which literally means lack of hope, means we just give up. And if everyone gives up, things will inevitably get worse. It's self-fulfilling. If we hope um, that they can be better and we try and imagine how things could be better, um, the imagination is the first step. You know, you have to imagine how it could be better to then try and make it better. Um, and find ways of bringing these imaginations into practice. And actually, I'm not totally uh, in a state of despair at all. I think that faulty though the COP26 climate summit was, um, there's now a wider recognition in the world, including among people in power, that we're in trouble. Uh, humanity and the planet are in trouble, thanks to our habits and our activities. And we need to do something about it. Um, Decarbonising the economy is now mainstream government policy in many countries. And, you know, 30 or 40 years ago, that might have seemed a forlorn hope. Um, so things do change. And I think we have to acknowledge that many people recognise the need for change. Um, and I think part of the problem is we've still got a scientific orthodoxy which is locked into a dogmatic materialism. Um, if you study science at school or university, you're still getting old school materialism taught almost without qualification, um, as if this is scientific truth. And of course, it puts off a lot of students from science, not surprisingly, because it's a very depressing and narrow worldview. And most people who study science, or many of them, certainly in countries like India or China, don't do it because of a deep curiosity about nature. They do it because it holds a key to a good job as an engineer or as a research scientist. They're doing it because it is a way of earning a living. Um, but um, my own particular struggle is with this scientific orthodoxy, which is totally committed still to uh, a dogmatic materialist worldview. And some of you may have seen my book, The Science Delusion, uh, where I take the 10 dogmas of materialism um, that are the foundations of the modern scientific worldview and show how science itself has gone beyond them um, and that we're actually passing beyond a materialist worldview, but many people within 
science and outside science don't yet realize it. So I think that's part of it. It's not the whole answer, of course. Uh, but as long as we have at the center of our educational system and public life, a false view of nature and a false view of human nature, then, um, and one that sets us at odds with the environment and with the natural world and the more than human world, then it's bound to be disastrous because it's so false. It gives such an unbalanced view. It gives a view of ourselves as the conquerors of nature, the ability to use natural resources however we see fit for human good and human good alone. Um, and, uh, you know, is the primary objective of economic and political systems, the uh, profit and ever rising incomes and the goal of businesses to make more and more profit all the time. These narrow goals obviously need to be transcended. Um, but if we have a worldview that has nothing but material realities in them and nothing but quantitative material realities, then quantifying progress in terms of money and gross domestic product and so on, um, and seeing the whole universe as material and us as merely material beings is, is obviously contributing to the problems. And we need to move beyond that. 